So one of the one of the big things over the weekend and and in last week as well was this kind of congealing conventional wisdom in some quarters. It was an unwinnable race because the economy was bad and the administration was unpopular. And of course, what I keep saying to that is, and she shouldn't have run if she couldn't win as part of the Biden Harris administration. But where do you guys think, uh, Dan? You first. Where do you think the debate is? Is it is is that congealing as as what people are going to stick to? Is it blame Biden? Is it cultural issues? Is it, you know, where where is the balance of the argument right now, knowing that it's going to continue to evolve? I think that's it. It's going to continue to, to evolve. And I think right now the elephant in the room remains the candidate. And I think basically there's the stuff about the party uh, being, you know, too woke. There's the issues about Biden. You know, the, the Biden people are taking kind of their victory lap, so to speak, in that like, hey, our economic policies were really good. You know, it breaks our heart that it didn't penetrate. But like it always says the same thing. We're better off than the rest of the world. Things are actually really good. And I think that, you know, once the party gets past that and as you see more of these autopsies, some of it is going to be her inability to make decisions and the just kind of like do no harm theory that they ran with. And so I think there's more to come on the party soul searching. Yeah. Sean. I, I, I think if you, I, I mean, look, it's so blatant that, that it's the candidate that anyone, I mean, if, if that's not what people on the, the left want to talk about, God bless them. Because to me, she, I mean, it was so easy. Donald Trump really effectively talked about issues that were affecting everyday Americans. Uh, you look at, go back to that CBS poll I mentioned earlier this morning, there's still 57% of Americans support mass deportations. Then you have yeah. a woman who wouldn't visit the border. I mean, it, to me, the candidate and the and and her her messaging was so bad that I, I think that's sixty percent of the problem. Yeah. So it's interesting because we talked about it here at length. I talked about it all cycle, uh, without just being disrespectful to her. I just saw her limits in this, particularly as I said over and over. She's not good at making tough decisions under pressure, and that's the job description. <clears throat> I think. The Politico story as a as an artifact is so interesting. They they style themselves as kind of like the Bible of political coverage, very sophisticated. There's barely a word in there about the candidate being the problem. To the contrary, it's the greatest celebration of anybody's written so far about how what a wonderful candidate she was and how it wasn't her fault. And that and that um, she's got all this goodwill and people are stoked about supporting her again. It's truly an exhibit of denialism. But there's been almost nothing written about how she performs the candidate. Admirable of her people not to leak about it. But I guarantee you, particularly the people who worked for Barack Obama and even Hillary Clinton, they know full well what a disastrous candidate they was. But They're not talking about it yet. But I agree with you guys. Eventually, th this will be part of the conversation, which is why the Politico story touting her as a future candidate seems a little off key to me. Sean. Well, when I hopped on. Go ahead, Sorry, Sean. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, when I when I came across CNN this morning, <laughs> there was a political panel, Scott Jennings, and Karen Finney, talking about this story. They were asking about the you know the story that we're talking about, and Karen Finney, who's a very very smart and, and experienced hand, was like, "She's an amazing candidate. The world is her oyster. Her future is bright." And I'm like, again, I get it. Like, be not. I would not want to. I don't crap on my my former clients or or can't. It's just not. But there's a there's there's a degree of reality there, and just to say, hey, I you know I think that she's a great person, but you know next time she'll have to be more focused. I mean, there's a degree to which the head in the sand exists on on her aides. Number two, I mean, with respect to Politico, and I don't know it, I, I'm no huge fan of the organization, but the the writer of the story, Eugene Daniels, has been basically a spokesman in waiting for Kamala if she won. I mean, I think he would have been her press secretary. So part of it is that they're assigning people to write these stories who fawn over her as if they're they're their spokesperson, not an objective reporter. 100% yeah, double my light on that piece, but go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Chris is actually that, a, better than that. Yeah, yes. Go ahead. People in the chat saying like, why do I hate Kamala Harris? And I thought you were a dem. I am a dem. It's I think the thing is candidates matter. And I think the party has problems that you're seeing talked about. But it's also undeniable that candidate quality matters, right? Donald Trump has is an outstanding political athlete, right? He challenged his party orthodoxy across the board in 16, right? He took risks. 
He, this time around, he went on platforms that nobody had gone on before because he's a consumer of, of kind of pop culture and what's hot and what's new. Candidates matter. And it's not being a bad Democrat to say Kamala Harris was a bad candidate, in my opinion.